Immortals, I'm Dark Lord Kaiser, and this is the Consuming Shadow, for basically no reason. It's also the Insanity Edition, I don't really know what that means. Uh, maybe it just means that's got a challenge mode. I don't know, I don't care. Uh, this is a game, as it says on the front title there, by Ben Yahtzee Crowshaw. Uh, Yahtzee being the uh, creator of the Zero Punctuation series of video game reviews, of which I'm very much a fan. Uh, he's also a novelist. He's got four books, I think. Mogworld, Jam, We'll Save the World for Food, and... Oh, what was the last one? Morphous? Amorphous? I haven't read the last one. It was released as an audiobook, which I never got around to listening to, and I don't know if it's been released as an actual novel yet. It probably has. I just haven't got around to reading it. Um... Mogworld I very much enjoyed. Jam less so. Which is I think that's the one he think he of the two of those two, I think he prefers Jam over Mogworld. I prefer Mogworld over Jam. I felt the ending of uh, Jam didn't have a lot of wasn't particularly satisfying. Just everyone died at the end, whereas at least Mogworld felt like something was achieved at the end of it, even if that did include everyone dying at the end. Doesn't really matter. Um, read them. They're good books. Save the World for Food uh, was a good one. Very different style to the other two in so much that not everyone died at the end. So that's that's nice. I haven't read Amorphous, as I said. So, whatever. Uh, nothing to do with the game. I just wanted to ramble about Yahtzee Crowshaw for a bit. So, The Consuming Shadow is a game uh, that obviously Yahtzee made. It is... A roguelike, so every thing is di every play is different, much like your um, Binding of Isaacs, that sort of thing. The idea is uh, a unknowable evil is attempting to infest our world, trying to um, invade it, and we have to stop them from doing that. How to do that? We have to assemble a spell. The spell contains four symbols. Those symbols, when sent in the right order, will prevent the the evil. So, I have played this before. I am not, however, any good at it. So, there's four characters to choose from. We've got... Yeah, the Scholar, the default character. As it says there, a gun, a car, sorry. <laughs> a car, a gun, 60 hours to save the world. The Wizard. Um, okay, so I should explain. the. You've got a gun, you have the ability to cast spells, but you don't know what those spells are. You have to find them. Um, and you can sort of swap things with with your gun as well for a bit of a melee. The wizard already knows all the spells except the banishment ritual. He's still got to find that. Um, they can't hit anything with their gun um, and the spell casting mechanic works a bit different. So normally when you cast a spell you lose a bit of sanity. The, the wizard doesn't lose sanity but they can only cast the spells so many times before the runes that you use to cast those spells degrade. And then you've got to find um, the runes etched in walls to renew them. Um, before starting this recording, I had a quick playthrough of the wizard, just to remind myself of the control scheme. And after about the first dungeon, I'd completely lost the ability to fight in any way, shape or form. Because I'd run out of bullets pretty quickly, and the one rune that you have to use for any kind of um, attack spell are degraded. And I couldn't find anything to renew it. I found things to renew... Lots of the other ones. I ended up locked in a, a dungeon with uh, where the um, aim of the dungeon was to kill the big bad, and I had no offensive capabilities. So, yeah, didn't go well that run. As a, this is not a game that I play very well. Anyway, the warrior doesn't have a gun. Um, can dodge instead, which is kind of useful, but a bit finicky, and can punch good. Can punch really good. And you got the ministry man who starts off with a load of money, already knows the banishment ritual, but doesn't actually have the same amount of time to, um, to play the game. Now, if memory serves with the Ministry Man, it says you got the full banishment ritual, you still don't know who the god who's invading is. So while you know three of... Because one of the runes will always be um, related to the god who's doing the invading. And if you don't know who's invading, 
You can't use the. You can guess the banishment ritual, but if you cast the wrong god, you get a game over. Everything's been stupid. So let's just go with the scholar. Something made me check for patterns in the runes. I don't know why, but I'm glad I did. A massive synchronization is coming, centered on Stonehenge in roughly 60 hours. I know what I must do. Explore protect places touched by the ancients, assembling clues to piece together the banishment ritual and the identity of the invading god. But I'm not sure how I know this. I have the strangest feeling that it might be because I've already done it. So, yeah, premise of this game is every time you play it, you're effectively reliving a life. It's like a multiple parallel worlds sort of scenario. Wait one second, I need to do a little twiddle on. Yes. Sorry, made a slight adjustment to the microphone. Um, hopefully that's not affected too much. We'll see. So... What's the... Oh, there it is. Yeah, I'm playing with the controller because I always play with controllers because I find them more comfortable than scrunching over a desk trying to manhandle keyboards and mice to make them work. I know some games that's better for like first-person shooters, but I like controllers. They're comfortable and I can sit back in my chair and enjoy myself. Anyway. So, you may have noticed this kill myself button popping over the side here. One of the mechanics of this game is you have a sanity meter. If you're sat the lower your sanity to get, the weirder effects start happening. So, um, the lights might start flickering, um, you might start seeing enemies that aren't actually there, so you go to hit them and they're not, you know, you've just shot or wasted a bullet on a, a... What's the word? Hallucination. That's the word I was looking for. My brain kept saying hieroglyphic. That's that's not the word I was looking for. Hallucination was the word I was looking for. Uh, but one of the other things is that options can change from what you read them as when you go to press select to kill myself. So you can actually end the game in a, a menu by accidentally entering here. So as you said, it says click in the background. Okay, the, that's exchange. I'm not going to read all that again. So I've got five stars, birth stars to place. You can see there's various places I can put them, each with with what was that? yeah. So wherever I put these five stars will give me a little perk to work with. So let's stick that there, stick that there. So there's now over here to get this with. So I might as well just go for a full sanity. Boost. I can find. There we are. You get your dead center, you get the most for a particular. Uh... So the crab is um, health. So if I can get it dead center of the crab, I can get a particular boost on crab. Let's. Yeah, let's get some. Oh, the priestess research. Let's get. Uh, how much research can we get? Three? Looks like we should be able to get three. There we are. Cool. So, those. Five stars give me plus 33 health, plus 25 sanity. A little bit of extra random spell chance. A little bit of extra random quick chance. Lockpick chance, plus seven. And research of plus four and a half. Are those helpful? Most of them, maybe. Health and sanity is certainly good to get, uh, get boosted. So, we've got a text saying, go look for stuff in places. Safe towns, there's cursed towns. Uh, and there's... Sort of in between the towns, I think. So, I'm up near Dinfort up here. So I can go to Dinfort and see what they've got, buy some stuff maybe. I've only got 15 monies, but we'll see. Or I can go to Oldham and be given a, a quest of some description to do. Which is basically go into dungeon, kill whatever you find, and do a specific task. I'm going to go to Dinfort first. Uh, use some of my initial starting money to buy a bit more ammo and possibly even get an item. Yeah, so I could spend 13 of my 15 monies and get a lucky charm, which I'm going to do. Increased loot is probably a useful thing to have. So I've got as many uh, 9mm bullets as I can carry. I don't have the money for any hollow points, so go back to the car. Networks down in Kidton need a message taken there in 11 hours. Okay, so. There is a time mechanic, as it said at the beginning, we have 60 hours, which. If you were to do. If I was to go into a dungeon and spend an hour in that dungeon, time would run out. 
Um, but as I'm driving, that time goes down quicker. So it's um, you'll see. So where's my time? So if I start driving, you can see it's giving me the countdown and time sped up as I'm driving. So. Uh, so yeah, random text can either give me an increase of money or sanity or a decrease in sanity. If you get a message from a family member, it might say, we love you, we're glad you're doing something useful, let us know you're safe when you can, you get sanity boost. Or it might come up and say, oh, fine, ignore me then, you bastard, we hate you, it's all your fault. At which point sanity will go down. So, um, on the other side of the car, I've got a med kit for healing my health, a illegal drug which will give me a sanity boost but will then drop down over time and will become less effective the more I use them because I'm developing a resistance. Uh, big box of stuff, spells and notes. We don't need to worry about those for now. Let's go into all of them and do stuff. The town is suffering under an infestation of small scuttling creatures. They attack randomly, killing cats, stealing food and injuring people. It is clear that this is only the beginning of something terrible. It starts with petty nuisances, killing pets and ruining crops, and sooner or later it escalates to missing people being found half devoured. I must root out the nest before it reaches that point. Let's get further. I was able to find a list of recent incident reports, mostly town people complaining about damage to their back gardens. I visited a few of the houses looking for a common factor. That came when I discovered that most of the gardens bordered a public park that had lately had its maintenance budget slashed. It is now overgrown and unwelcoming. A welcoming, that is, to humans. Right, so... My mission, if I choose to accept it, which I kind of have, is... Find and destroy a nest. So, let's just have a look at me. Buttons. It says Xbox pad, I mean, it's Steam controller, but same idea. So, gun is X, melee is B. As I said, I did just play this with the... Um, the wizard, but the wizard didn't have a melee, so I didn't want to accidentally uh, shoot, um, take a swipe when I was trying to shoot something, or shoot something when I was trying to take a swipe at it. So I need to preserve my ammunition, you see. So let's just keep running in a straight line, see how far it is. Oh, a bin! What's in the bin? Hooray! Bullets that I can't carry. Great. Ah, go away. Go away. Hey, you dropped a thing. Ooh, armor pierces. Nice. So, some gates are locked, I have lock picks times 3, and a 20% chance of getting through, so if I try to pick that lock, there's a good chance I'll fail. Good chance I'll succeed as well, a chance I'll succeed, but I'm more likely to fail. So I'll hold off on that for now, because most of the time you can find a set of keys laying around, as I just did, fantastic. So let's just have a wander around. Now, the risk reward system in this is that Every place I go has a chance to encounter enemies. Enemies uh, have a chance to hurt me. If I leave a room without killing the enemies, I'll take a hit to my sanity. Um, but if I don't explore all the rooms, I might not find all of the information in that area. Okay, the T is a rune inscribed in white and is upside down. The associated god would regard this as an insult. So there's either a god that is related to Bati and or white and that is the opposing god of whatever god is running this particular dungeon. So if I just bring my um, notebook up. So there's three gods in play at any one time. Uh, one god will be the invader, one god will be uh, the ally, and one god will be the enemy of the invader. So you'll find all three gods will have stuff going on in the area. So this particular um, dungeon I'm in could be related to the ally, for example. Um, or it could be the enemy. Um, so let's say I was that this dungeon is related to the enemy. So if that enemy... Um, if the invader is has the rune, the tea, and the colour white, they're putting a white... Uh, a rune in... Um, a petit rune upside down with white could be as an insult. Alternatively, white could be the invader's colour and the petit being upside down is the insult. There's, there's lots of 
interpretations, but uh, they always have something to. So you can actually use those runes as for, uh, sources of clues, as well as the actual clues which will straight up tell you stuff. Go away. Stick with fly. You may wonder why I'm explaining all of this in advance. It's because I'm probably not going to have time to explain it during the actual... when it actually turns up and is uh, useful, because I'll either be in a fight or I will die before it becomes necessary to talk about. So, there's an S. Go away. Ow. Too many things, too many things. Yeah. yeah. Die, you. Yeah, die. Stupid floaty bugger. Okay. Now, I have to pay attention here because return to the car, sometimes while it's writing return to the car, the objective will suddenly change to run and something will attack from over there and I've got to escape it. So, if I go to my notes, uh, not notes, spells, it's telling me that clue well, I just got told me that the second part of the banishment ritual is that symbol there. Which doesn't mean a huge amount at the moment, but hopefully we'll become yeah. better off. Yeah. Be gone with me. Hopefully that'll become useful later. I have one bullet and a very ineffective swipe for the rest of the year. Uh... Well, for the game currently, I've got to go. It means I've got to find a town and buy stuff. The creatures still infest every crack and shadow of this town, but I have ensured they will no longer breed. A combined effort by the locals will be enough to exterminate the remainder. I can move on now. Cool, back into the car. So, I got injured a little bit and went a little bit mad. Um, not too worried about the madness at the moment. I will, however, heal me sent off. Yeah, so the med kit's the only way of restoring your health. When you go to a hospital, you then have to refill the med kit. Um, so let's... Oh. I want to go to Kidson to get this delivery done. Yeah, I will, because I'll get me more money. I think if it's just delivery, I don't have to worry about it being a cursed town. If I've been sent there to say, go help in the invaders, that would have been different. Okay. Text from the family member. If I open it, I could get a sanity boost. I could get nothing. I could get a sanity hit. I always open these things. I could ignore them, but I always use them. I just wanted to say that I love you, and I will support you to the end. I won't tell anyone where you've gone. Yay, sanity boost. Welcome to Kidton. We, uh, we go in. The message is received by a flustered man dressed not dissimilarly to myself. He's agitated enough that I'm forced to awkwardly remind him of the agreed payment before he can run off, whereupon he throws a handful of notes at me and disappears into the shadows. Unfortunately, I didn't see how much money I gained there. Maybe about a tenner, I think. I don't know. The atmosphere is tense here as news has spread of the darkness infesting neighbourhood towns. Besides that, I cannot sense the shadow's influence for now. Right, let's go find supplies. So, I do, I like getting items. I do. Because the items, A, have boosts like, um, you know, uh, uh, halving the sanity loss, but also there are random events that can happen as you're driving along, and if you've got the right item, you can guarantee a positive result from those events, you see. So, I'm going to buy it, because Sonic, why the hell not? So I've got six monies, that means I can afford two armor-piercing bullets. Was that a good decision on my part? Probably not. Let's see. Um, for those who are familiar with England's ge uh, geography at any point, you may re not recognize any of the names of these towns. They're actually randomized, so each town is split into two sort of halves, and those halves get randomly put together, except for Stonehenge, which obviously is an actual location. But uh, so it says Saxworth here and Four Hill there and Finns all over there. But, um, you know, it could mix those up. So next time I come, I might find, um, I don't know, Oldworth or Forham or Finns Holm. You know, that sort of thing. So he's, he's done well as old. Well, not that old as uh, Misty Yatsi. Ah, here we are. This is one of the uh, random events that can happen. I only dozed off for a moment. Something hit my bumper, rattled across the rock, rattled across the roof, and landed in a heap behind the car. 
I gripped the steering wheel, momentarily paralysed with horror at what I could have just done. So I could drive off. Uh, good chance that'll give me a sanity hit, though, because you know, there's no way of knowing what I've done. Or I could find out what I hit, which, again, could give me a sanity hit. Or uh... So if I go out, get out of my car, find out that I've hit a person, my sanity will probably be hit harder than if I just drive away. If I get out and find that it's a monster, I probably will be fine. Unless that monster isn't dead, in which case it may attack me. Let's find out what I hit. To my relief, the person I hit, for it seems to be human, is already standing up by the time I get to him. But for a few bru bruises, he seems unharmed. Relatedly, he seems to be paralytically drunk. His hand has remained clamped around a whiskey bottle throughout the entire ordeal. He seems easygoing about the incident, and in truth, barely seems to be aware of it. He doesn't look like he has been this way for long. I suspect this may have been how he chooses to face the shadow. A pitiful man. But once I was back on the road, I began to envy him. How is he just all liking my dramatic reading when I read him properly? It's quite fun to do. Unfortunately, I do occasionally mess the words up and have to start again, which kind of ruins the atmosphere somewhat. And this is a very atmospheric game. Uh, what's here in this town? I feel quite buoyed by the clean air here. And the people are friendly enough. It can only be a matter of time before they catch the shadow's attention. So I've got no money, so there's basically no point in me coming here. So I have a feeling that you can judge by the colour of the, um, the signs saying where you are. I think those can indicate, before you get out of your car, what kind of town you... I didn't mean to go back in. I meant to set destination. No. So let's just go to Saxworth. Why not? But I think when I arrive at Saxworth, if the sign is in green, I'm fine. If the sign is in red, I'm screwed. There are five ancients, Yashug, Yala, Nyx, Thoth, and Chizo. Three of those are active. One of those three is the invader. Um, some of Yahtzee's previous games uh, was called the Chizo Mythos, and this is sort of tangentially related to that, um, but not in a canonical way. So, the Chizo Mythos uh, had the main character, Trilby, who it is sort of indicated is now working at the Ministry of Occultism as this uh, T, who is signing off the these uh, messages um, against Chizo, who was um, an ancient, unknowable, or incomprehensible um, sort of elemental. But he was and he, he, elemental is a bit of a strange word. His element was pain, so he's basically the god of pain. Now, whenever he turns up in this game, he is not necessarily the god of pain. He could be the god of lust or madness, or he could be the god of pain. Um, but as I said, it's all randomised, so you can't just go, oh, Chizo. You can't just go, oh, the, the mad god is invading. Or oh, sorry, the, the pain god is invading. The pain god is Chizo, thus. Yeah, it's, it's not that simple. I'm yammering again. Okay, Saxworth. That sign looks pretty green to me, so I think we're going to be alright. Nope! <laughs> I'm wrong again. My hair stands on end, and I feel a scratching at the back of my mind. This can only mean one thing. Magic. It must have leaked through in great amounts from the outlying realms. Magic bleeds through into our realm through rifts, and the concentration of it here means one must be nearby. If I can find it, then I can use the same magic it spews to seal it closed. Casting magic has its difficulties, but tracing it is straightforward enough. It's just a matter of finding other slithers, traces, and reported monster sightings to track it back to the point of origin. A simple set of divinations lead me to the fairly new built com to a fairly newly built community college on the border, where the commercial district meets the suburbs. Another case of students messing with powers they don't understand. I steel myself to enter. In we go. So find us dimensional rift, seal it with an incantation. When I get to the rift, it'll have some symbols floating around it. I just have to cast those back in it, basically. And I've got three bullets to work with. This is an excellent plan. That's our gander. Do, 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 do. So the different types of um, environments yield different results. Officers almost always give. Um, I find bits of paper, so I'm not likely to find many 
um, bullets or maybe some money laying around here. Okay, so um, in terms of what I find in the actual environment, the monsters drop a slightly different. So. so if I go to a warehouse, I'm likely to find naught but bullets and um, money and stuff like that. A body lights at my feet. Their, their body seems to have been ripped open in several places, and the wo wounds repeatedly violated in unspeakable ways. So probably a god of lust then, in terms of what's running this area. So here we are. So now all I need to do is cast those two runes back it before it starts doing what it's doing and throwing things at me. Stupid like go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Be be dead. Jesus, wept, that took a long time. Mostly garbage, but there's a piece of sturdy wire I could probably twist into a lockpick. Okay, what I found here. So there's the mantra again. The last part sounded like shum. So I want to just double check I don't have to run. And I've got to get away, get away. Ah, you bugger. So now I'm being constantly chased by this ghost thing. Leaving, yeah, leaving rumors gets me sanity hit, but I don't want to hang around and get attacked by a thing. What I do want to do is run around and check for... Ah, stupid ghost thing. No, I want to check for... Clues. There's a clue, what do you say? Okay, I found a spell. A lockpicking spell. And badness this way. Don't want to deal with the badness. Badness, badness, go away. Don't want you. Go. Leave. Bad. More clues, what do you say? Okay, so Nyx is the enemy of Alan. Okay, so it means we've got that, and we've got that. Now what we know is that these two are invaders of each other. Uh, enemies of each other, rather. <laughs> Not invaders of each other. Okay. Right, let's get out of here. And up we go. Running, 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 running. Okay. Was any of that a good idea? Probably not. Probably not. The town has not immediately improved any more than a flood zone would, sim would be simply because the rain has stopped. But my contribution is made. Time to move on. So, health at half, sanity, pretty good still. Um, might as well deplete my uh, medkit supplies. So yes, I have learnt the open lock spell. So if I use that spell, I'll take a hit to my sanity, um, but it means I won't have to worry about lock picks and stuff, which sometimes can be useful. Not as useful as spells like um, Circle of Mass Death, which, you know, if you're in a room, just kills everything in there. Which is very useful, but again, you got to balance the sanity versus the, uh, the health loss. So let's go to Arms Church. For basically no reason. I said, I, ah, here we are, a thing happening. I find myself outside a small garage that appears to still be operating. The owner, a stocky and oddly haunted fellow, explained that since the shadow fell, he saw it as his duty to make sure people get to where they need to be. He was impressed at the state of my car, considering, and has offered to boost the engine's top speed if I can spare him two hours and fifteen pounds. I don't have fifteen pounds, though that is a very good price for, uh, for car maintenance. Particularly two hours worth of work. We've got reports of a sleeper selling kid to need to clean up sooner rather than later. If you've got the time to sort this out, you won't go unrewarded. Okay, so that's saying if I go to Kidton, I can fight a thing and get paid. So I'm in Arms Church. It's in Arms Church. Now oh, it's more stuff. I feel a crackling in the depths of my inner ears. The backs of my palms are itching all of which indicates the presence of magical energy. It must have leaked through in great amounts from the outlying realms. Magic bleeds through into our realms through rifts, and the concentration of it here means there must be one nearby. Obviously, some repeated text in all of this stuff. If I can find it, I can use the same magic it spews to seal it closed. Isolating the rough location of the lift, rift, of the lift, yeah. Isolating the rough location of the rift was the easy part. It's just a matter of finding off slithers, traces of reported monster sightings to track it back to the point of origin. A simple set of divinations leads me to an extended area 
of overgrown parkland that backs onto the town's largest cemetery. An ideal location for impressionable kids to come and dare each other to perform rituals they don't realise have power. Right, go into park and seal the rift. Cool. I have two bullets. I'll have to pistol whip everything to death. Eh, eh, eh. Right. Let's go. Oh. Right, bugger all over here. Here we go. It's worth mentioning, monsters can spawn behind you, so when I run over here, sometimes a thing can pop up over there, which is irritating to say the least, particularly if you're trying to conserve your sanity. Ow, ow. Timing element to the, uh, the melee account attack, which I haven't figured out properly. Because that would require skill, which I don't have. What we got here? Another victim of the shadow. Boils coat their flesh, even the backs of their throat, to the point that suffocation may have been the cause of death. Okay, so we're dealing with disease in this particular uh, dungeon. Oh, a bin. It's in the bin. In the language of the ancients, the syllable Ung is usually given as a name, but it has also variously been written to denote the concepts of love, lust, and sex. Okay, so Ung is lust. So, aspect, lust. There we are. Now, we don't know which one of these is the invader, we don't know which one of these is the enemy. What we do know is that one of the um, aspects is. Um, there we go. Disease. But we don't know who it belongs to. Um, lust was probably what was in the, uh, the previous dungeon we were in, where the body was torn apart and then. Messily violated. Another victim of the shadow. Oils coat the flesh. Yeah, yeah, we just read that. Different body, same flavour text. Hey! Who said you could appear behind me, little bugger? What have we got here? Ooh, monies. And what's in the bin? Ooh, a lot pick. Nice. Yeah, be very careful when things spawn behind you, you've got to listen out for the audio clues, because you can see the visibility is buggery. Right, so what we got there, we've got... Uh, Shuman Yu, by the looks of it. There we go. Dealt with it. The God of Lust is not the invading. So it's not the God attempting to invade. I know you're reading this, Scholar. Your actions will have far further reaching consequences than you could possibly imagine. Right, okay, so what we know is... Nyx is the invader, then, because... He was the enemy of Ang. Ang is associated with the God of Lust, and Lust is not the invader. And since there's only one invader, that means whoever's left is going to be the ally. Now, I don't think... Nothing you find will ever explicitly state God X is the invading God. I don't think. You have to be really lucky to find that. But what you can find is that it'll say, oh, this person's not the invader. But you will find another thing saying that... God 1 and 3 are allies. So you start to work it out that way. So I am 99% sure that Nyx is going to turn out to be our invader. I suppose technically he could be the invader's ally, but again, we'll work with that for the moment. Now, I've already searched the dungeon. So I don't really need to go hunting around. I don't know what that objective was. I'm going to assume it's telling me to run away. Go away. Nobody likes you. Hey, more money. So I've done pretty well for cash in this particular dungeon, I think. That's probably good. I need to go and spend some of it. With the rift closed, the endlessly ringing buzz were replaced by the deathly quiet of a deserted ghost town. Still, ghosts are preferable to what, once res to what resided here when I first arrived. I hurried back to the car. Right, this episode's going on a bit longer than I thought, because I was convinced I was going to die, but I didn't mean to go back inside. I was, gonna, I was convinced I was going to die before I got anywhere here, so if I go back up to Kidton... Yeah, sure, let's go to Kidton. Why the hell not? I mean, I've got to go through a safe town to get there. Where are you? A man from the government came today. I don't know what he... I don't know what he was saying, but I think it may have been threatening us. We need you here. Well, there goes my sanity! Come on, get to the town. Get to the town. Get to the town. There we are. We go into Finsall. I can buy some stuff because I've got 30 monies. Yeah. 
So, buy all of them. Oh yeah, for seven damage, we'll uh, half physical damage. We'll take the body armor for seven coins. Uh, yeah, let's just purchase as many things as we can. So they've sold out of those. I've still got nine monies, and yeah, I think that's uh, about as good as we're gonna get. Oh, I should have gone to the hospital. Never mind. I'm not playing this to win. I'm playing this to play it. So I'm not. Don't expect to see the ending of the game here. I'm gonna die. Oh dear, we hit something again. What do we hit? My heart fell inch by inch as I approached the unmoving shape in the road and confirmed that it was human. A large, bearded man in several layers of old clothing probably had been sleeping rough. His eyes are open and dead. The horror is a cold, petrifying thing draped across my brain like a soaking wet blanket. There are too many lives at stake to dwell. A small amount of currency managed to eight has spilled out of the dead man's pockets and I decided he wouldn't need it anymore. I am unable to meet my own gaze in the rearview mirror. So basically, I ran over a homeless man and stole his wallet. For the greater good, people. Oh, it's actually on the number. If this just says, I know what you did, I will laugh like nobody's business. Hi, I don't know you. A dream told me that I should help you. I sent you ten quid. I hope that's enough. Yeah, sure. That's, that's very nice of you. Though I have to question why your dreams are telling you to send money to strangers and you're just not questioning that. Right, so, Kidton. What am I doing in Kidton? I am brought to the problematic area, I'm told that payment will be made once the problem is dealt with. I don't think the locals fully understand what kind of presence is in their town, but they showed much relief and gratitude as I made my way inside. What am I doing? Okay, big thing here. Go find and kill. Nice. Let's see. So the first thing I always do in these dungeons, I always uh, try and get the lay of the land, just sort of run as far in a straight line as I can, just to see how. Eh. Go away, go away. There we go. Just see how sort of wide the dungeon can be, and then I work my way from, uh, from there. Hey, more money! So, I'm just being inscribed on the wall in yellow and upside down. So, to God would just regard this as a grave insult. So. Before we saw that um, Ung would be insulted by. Was it Ung we saw? Or was it Petit we saw in white? Basically, we're saying Ung and Yellow, I think, are related. We'll leave it at that for now. We don't really need much more information about this, but we can. Uh... Oh, I forgot one other thing that I can do when I get to these uh, runes. If I cast that particular rune. Sometimes stuff happens, I'll get like a sanity return or something, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. Oh, and this sanity hit is making me flashlight go silly bogus. That's that's not a tree, that's not a tree, it's not a tree. Stop it. I think I've got to shoot those things. Oh, not get hit by them, obviously. Ah. I hope this is how I do damage to this thing. Go on, stop it. It's going more frequently, so I think that's an indication that that's. There we go. Yep, I did it. I'm not familiar with that particular enemy type, that's why I shot the actual tree a few times first, then realised what I was trying to get me to do. The tribesmen, tasked with Nightwatch of the village, are given confidence by chanting Ang Shim before going on patrol, claiming that it gives remarkable night vision. Hey, I found a new spell! There. Right, don't have to run away. Good. Means I can explore freely. And by explore freely, I mean go punch monsters in the stupid face. Ah. Uh, Ah, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it. Didn't drop anything. Right. Stupid sanity hit. I think it was a sanity effect. It's going to be hard to tell. I have a feeling something bad's in this area. Go. Away. Go. Away. Go away. 
Or at least drop some loot, damn it. Now, I don't think I, I haven't found any keys yet. I don't want to waste my lockpicks. But if I look around, there's a good chance I will find a set of keys. Oh, I'll take bullets. Bullets are useful. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Be dead, damn it. There we are. Oh, more bullets. Nice. I guess we'll switch to those. So three types of bullets. Uh, hollow points do the most damage. Uh, standard. A standard. And armor piercing can actually hit multiple targets if they're in a line. So since we've got uh, hollow points, we'll stick with those because that's what we've got most of. So, yeah, I'm in yellow. Let's cast it. Why the hell not? Yay! Sanity gain. Damn it. Stupid hoppy bugger. Go away, go away, go away. Now one thing that always um, annoyed me about this game when it first came out was the people who um, criticised the graphics. And I don't think that's fair. I think the graphics for the type of game are exactly what they need to be. There's a lot left to the imagination to uh, give that sort of encroaching sense of horror. I don't think that... I've never felt the people complaining about graphics when... Uh, I just have people complaining about graphics when they are look like they've been made in you know, MS Paint and poorly animated, but I think this is just the right balance for what this kind of gameplay needs. That's just me thinking. I know obviously some people want all games to look like... Um, insert whatever the modern highest tech graphic game here is, because whatever I say will date the video. So let's say, I don't know, Crisis. There you go. Every game needs to look like Crisis. The joke is that Crisis is an older game by now, so its graphics won't be up to date. Shh. Don't tell people who get annoyed about that. A body lies at my feet. Their body was so horribly diseased that a violent burst of swellings and boils appears to have proved fatal. Yeah, I could tell it proved fatal, mate. He's a corpse. Right, so didn't find any keys. Did find lots of stupid hoppy bugs, but go away. What do you drop for me? Hooray! Free health. Nice. Yeah, I saw you do that game. Luckily, I don't need to go through that door anyway. I do need to go through that one. So I'm going to try my lock. Lock. Try me lock. Try me lock with the lock. Try me lock with the lock. What we got? Yeah! One lockpick did it. Nice. If there's nothing in this room, I'm going to be very irritated. Hey, right, I've been. What have we found? Eight monies. Eh, that's, that's fair. Uh, now we need to go back up again. And then we need to leave. Eh. God damn it. That wasn't me being tip stupid, though that is usually the case. My controls have reversed. I'm currently pre There we are. That change there was the... Um, I was pressing left and he was moving right. And I was pressing right and he was moving left. The controls had switched as a sanity effect. Which is why I couldn't run either. He just sort of tottered along going in the opposite direction to the one I wanted him to. It's that kind of game, you see. Okay, problem resolved. Cool. I think I'm going to call it an episode now. It's not really a fun... Ooh! You can see now the kill myself uh, option has popped up. So let's... Oh, I've already been here, so... Let's spend all my money. Why not? Oh! Ah, what the hell. We'll end it this way. Because... Yep, let's face it. I was never going to be able to play enough to get to the, uh, the end game, so it wasn't going to be a satisfying conclusion to this, uh, this game in any reasonable time frame. And I've already wasted enough of your time. It's a fun game. If you haven't tried it, I do recommend playing it. Um... The the difficulty is a bit of an issue for me, though, in that it's it fluctuates quite a bit. So this run was a relatively easy one for me. As I was going through, you know, I wasn't taking huge amounts of damage. I was finding a reasonable amount of uh, items, but it's all done by the random number generator. So you could go into uh, you could go into a dungeon, and every single room has got two or three monsters in it. And you're not finding money, or you're not finding the clues you need, or you're not finding um, ammo. So you keep finding lockpicks or health. Um, 
which is good, but it means that you lose your offensive capability, or you'll you'll just find money, or you'll you'll do two or three dungeons with the clock ticking down, and you're not finding the clues you need to find out who's invading, or you'll know who's invading, but you won't find that uh, the last two symbols to the banishment ritual. You know, so it's um. That's the nature of roguelikes, you know, it is, uh, everything changes all the time, so it can be quite awkward when you're trying to get uh, get a playthrough going. But it also means that there's no... Um, that even death can help future runs. So as you can see, I've got a, a, a bunch of points for a level-up system. That level denotes how many stars I put in the sky at the beginning of the, uh, the next run. So uh, you start off with one... Uh, every level increases your um, star number by one. So as you get a higher level, you can make sure you're getting that extra boost of sanity you're going to need, or that extra boost to health, or your car's going faster, or you're more likely to find stuff. So it's it's uh, it's balanced. It's, uh, it's a bit balanced in that regard. So we'll read this out, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, I got the date. Subject: the scholar committed suicide forty hours before the ancient invasion. Managed to partially assemble the banishment ritual. Tended to favour close combat, exterminating 21 enemy minions with melee attacks. Learned two spells, but seemed to distrust magic and avoided making casual use of it. In the end, subject was a heavily armed scholar. Yeah, I was a scholar. That was the that was the character. So that does vary depending on how you play as well, which is kind of quite, um, quite nice. So it says that I tend to distrust magic. Actually... When I usually play, I'm quite fond of using magic. Unfortunately, I didn't find any useful spells. I found... What did I find? Uh, locks. I forgot I had the lock-picking spell, now I think about it. <laughs> Oops. Um, and night vision. Um, the night vision isn't overly useful. It just puts a green filter on things. So you can see the room better, but I don't find it's worth the sound to hit when you can just walk up and down the room. Maybe we get later on into a run where you're more likely to find stronger enemies, so you need to know what's in a room before you start walking around, but at the point I was at, not really worth it. Um, if I'd found a damaging spell, I would have probably abused that to the point of my character being completely mad. Which he was already completely mad, that's kind of the game. So, there we go. So, yeah, it's quite entertaining that Kill Myself just is on the auction screen. So if I click enough, I can stop the gun. Or I can just let him do his thing, like we did. Bam. One little mechanic I do like about the um, kill yourself option is that if your character doesn't have any bullets, the kill myself option will pop up and the animation will run, but then it will just go click because you can't shoot yourself, you haven't got any bullets. And you actually gain a bit of sanity as a result. It's uh, quite entertaining. It's a good game. Play it. It's fun. Jesus, this video has really been going on for 48 minutes. Oops. Okay, I'm done. Bye.